episode 89 take 3. You know, sometimes you just can't get your hands on film quality lights to light what you're doing, especially if you're in isolation and you don't already have something like what I'm using here to actually help you. So if you're still looking to be creative and you're not too sure how, here are two different situations that I lit using some very basic modification. Let's start with the best situation and that is natural light. If you've got it, use it. So here's the space we're using. It's a large window with a lot of sun. A pretty good situation to be in because we can modify it however we want. It's important to take note of the direction that your window is facing. If it's a north or a south facing window, you might have more optimal light situations compared to east or west. It's gonna determine the best time in the day Day for you to be shooting in that particular location. So it's really important to know. Overcast days are great because you've kind of got a giant softbox over everything already, and then you can modify it using negative fill and cut any bounce. With sunny days like this one, where the light is very direct, it's not looking so great. So we can diffuse and then we can either bounce back into the other side of the face or use negative fill to shape it. So the first step here is to address the absolute obvious, and that is how sharp and how bright that sun is coming through that window. And we're gonna modify it using a couple of different methods and see which one works. The first one I'm trying here is baking paper. And although the sheets are quite small and I probably could have benefited from using another sheet to completely cover my subject and not have any light spill, I still think it worked quite well. It's super accessible, it's easy to find. And if you look at the difference between that and a full sheet of professional light diffusion, it doesn't look too different. Although I would still use proper diffusion if it's available to you. Baking paper is not a perfect substitute and it's definitely not the professional substitute for these sort of things. But if you're shooting something at home and you're just looking for a quick solution, baking paper is a way to go. You could also try a bed sheet or white fabric and hang that on the window. You can see here, I've actually just pegged this to the blinds uh, just to let it drape down in a single layer. This had a very different look to it because it was so white it was actually bouncing the light as well, and it was creating an even more soft light, but it was on the cooler side of things. It was cooling down the color temperature of the light that was coming through the window. Now let's address the other side of the face. We can do a couple of things here. We can put negative fill, which is basically just a big sheet of black fabric hanging over a C-stand, and that will shape the shadows a bit nicer, make them a bit deeper and cut any spill from the rest of the room. Alternatively, if you want more of a high key look, you can actually bounce the light back into the other side of the face. And we can use a couple of different things to do that as well. I started off by using a five in one fold out reflector, which in my opinion is the first thing you should buy if you're a videographer, a filmmaker or anybody doing video content creation. Here's the part gold, part silver side, which I quite like because it's a little bit warm, but it's a little bit cool at the same time. It kind of evens out the uh, color balance a bit of that bounce compared to the warm sunlight that's coming through the window. It's really reflective though, so you can adjust how much bounce you want to happen by adjusting the distance from your subject. Here is the white reflective side, which I'm not a fan of because it's just a little bit too pale. It cools the image down a little bit too much and I don't really like that. The sunlight coming through the window is quite warm, especially with the tone of the room. It has a lot of warm tones on the wall. So we have a lot of reflected light that's really warm. And then when we use a white bounce, it cools it down that little bit too much and it doesn't quite match the reflected tone of the rest of the room. And here's the super low budget version. This is a piece of silver packaging that I found around the house from a recent package I got and it worked. It looks bloody great. And again, you can adjust the intensity by bringing it closer to the subject and further away. With this one, because it was a smaller surface area, I was able to control it a little bit more as well. Now let's look at nighttime. No natural light, no film lights. It's very daunting. In this situation, it's best to use practical lights and try to create depth in the image. Now, I wouldn't recommend using ceiling lights because they can be a little bit hard to control unless you have an adequate way to modify them using the methods we'll talk about later, or alternatively, you just want a blanket lighting setup that's going to be fairly high key. Not quite recommended, but you can do it. So for today's exercise, I'm gonna use a bedside lamp. It's got a beautiful bronze lampshade on it, but I don't want that. I'm gonna modify this how I would like, so I'm going to remove that. It also is dimmable, but I'm gonna turn it up full brightness because I wanna show you what you can do without a dimmer. One thing to remember when working with practicals is the light globes that you're using 
are going to affect the quality of light so, so much. Try to stay away from LED lights unless they're of a really high quality and you've checked the color temperature. Color temperature in these sort of lights can vary greatly. As you can see in our reference shot here with our setup, that lamp that's in the background is super duper yellow, but we're gonna work with it. So we're not gonna use that light as our key. We're rather gonna use that to create a little bit of depth in our image. What I like to do is I like to head to the local hardware store and I have a look at the different light globes that are available. I tend to look at the halogen light globes and I get a couple of different wattages so that if the light is too bright, I can replace it with another globe that is less bright. I'm gonna stick with the bulb that's actually already in this one. It's bright enough, I don't need anything brighter. But of course, without a shade, this is gonna be ugly. It's gonna spill everywhere. So the first step is to control it. And for the sake of doing things with stuff around the house, I'm gonna use tin foil to do this. So I made a little bit of a flag out of tin foil and I popped that onto the back of the light to stop the spill from happening behind the light and reflect it a little bit forward. Now, if we were in a professional setting, we'd probably use something like this, which is actually cine foil. It's a matte black tin foil, but very rigid. And you can use that to cut spill of lights as well as shaping and modifying what you've got. Mine's all crinkled and used from a couple of years of usage, but it lasts a long time. Next up, we're gonna look at diffusion and you don't need to diffuse, but I'm going to. I had a look at using unbleached muslin, which you've seen me use in the past and it looked great, but I didn't have an adequate and safe method of getting that on the light without it touching the globe. That's the thing with using household lights like this, especially halogen bulbs, they are going to get very hot. You don't wanna put anything directly on the light. So if you're doing anything like this, just be really cautious about how you handle those globes, what what you put next to them and how you handle them after they've been used. So I moved on to baking paper, which is a little bit easier to use because it's gonna hold its shape. And I pegged it to the bottom of the shade frame. It was able to stand upright and cover majority of what I needed. It looks great, but the last touch I wanted to do was to wrap the light around the face a little bit more. We are lighting the off side of the face here with our lighting setup. So I wanted to bring some more light into the shadowy part of the face. So using a reflector on gold side to match that warm tone that we're going with, I played around with lighting up the other side of the face. It was looking okay, but Dustin came up with a really good idea about where to place it. And we decided to wrap it around the back. So we placed the reflector behind Dustin, which in turn wrapped the light around towards his ear more and not just flat onto that side of his face. It created a little bit more shape, made it a little bit more moody. It looks great. So I'm real happy with the end results here. They both look really nice. It didn't take too much gear, but it did take a lot more thinking time to try and come up with the solutions when not having film lights. It was fun though. It was a good challenge. And if you're stuck, if you're in a bind and you don't have any film lights, you can do this sort of thing. But just because it can be done doesn't mean it should be done in professional circumstances. If you've got access to film lights, use them. If you've got access to the proper equipment, use it. But if you don't, if you're stuck at home and you just want to shoot something really quick and be creative, there are things you can do. These things aren't replacements for professional equipment, but it's a workaround if you don't have the professional equipment. Creative solutions to problems, if you will, which is pretty much what filmmaking is. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're staying safe and I'll see you next week. Yeah.